Four miles south of Whitby lies the small village of Littlebeck. In 1678, Red Barn Farm was home to Matthew and Margaret Lythe, who were known recusants. Unfortunately for Matthew Lythe, he was overheard by John Reeves saying, the authorities should stop blaming Catholics for every wrongdoing in the country. Suspicions aroused, Reeves arranged for Red Barn to be searched. He was looking for weapons or other evidence to support Oates's popish plot. On the 8th of December, 1678, Father Postgate made his way to the farm to baptise the Lythe's new son, Ambrose. It was to be his final ever service. He had barely finished when John Reeves burst in with the local constables. Reeves may not have found evidence for his plot, but from the artefacts discovered in the house, he believed he had caught a Catholic priest in the act. Father Postgate was arrested, along with Matthew and two local farmers. They were all taken 15 miles south to Brompton Hall, where they were charged the next day by local justice of the peace, Sir William Cayley. Two constables gave evidence that Postgate was known to be working in the area as a priest, perhaps an indication of how even local law enforcement had turned a blind eye to his work over the years. Cayley decided there was enough evidence to commit Postgate for trial in York. The two farmers were released to help bring in the harvest. Matthew, though, refused to say anything to implicate Postgate. For that, he spent six months in prison. Father Postgate was taken to York Castle. In the 1500s, it was a dilapidated building used as a prison for local felons. Today, all that remains of the original structure is the keep, Clifford's Tower. Nicholas spent the long, cold winter months locked up, awaiting trial. Though he still had friends because he received money to help him through the tough prison system. Tradition has it he kept himself occupied by writing a hymn, one that is still sung today. On March the 16th, 1679, Father Postgate was taken from his cell to the Guild Hall in York. He was charged not in connection with the Popish plot, of which he was clearly innocent, but instead with treason under an ancient Elizabethan statute, essentially for being a Catholic priest who'd been abroad to train to then return to the country and practice the religion. Even in the late 1600s, Father Postgate would have been subject to the same sort of trial by jury that we see in a modern day court. Much like the people of Whitby, it seems the trial judge was sympathetic towards him. With no testimony offered from Matthew Lythe, the judge tried to have the case withdrawn. However, three witnesses came forward from the prosecution to say they had received sacrament in the popish manner. This room in the Guildhall is where juries would meet to discuss their verdicts. It was certainly used to decide the fate of other secretive Catholics at the time. So it's possible this is where they deliberated on the fate of Father Postgate. The evidence presented at his trial was enough to find him guilty. The only sentence available was to be hung, drawn and quartered. Postgate was no sooner back in his cell when one of the witnesses who'd spoken against him came begging for forgiveness. He blessed and comforted her and even gave her some money for the journey home. Five months later, on the 7th of August, 1679, Nicholas Postgate was taken from his cell, tied to a hurdle and dragged through the mud on the streets of York on his way to the gallows. But what was supposed to be a torment and humiliation for criminals became something of a triumphant procession for him. Supporters, both Catholic and Protestant, turned out to wish him well on what would be his final journey. 
This is the Knavesmire, just outside of York city centre. Here, there was a large wooden frame from which groups of criminals could be hung. Among the people executed at this spot include the notorious highwayman, Dick Turpin. At the age of 83, and in his final act, Nicholas Postgate addressed the crowd. Mr Sheriff, he said, you know I die not for the plot, but for my religion. I pray God bless the King and the royal family. I pray you, Mr Sheriff, tell the King that I have not offended him in any way. I pray God give him his grace and grant him the light of truth. I forgive all those who have wronged me and brought me to this death, and I desire forgiveness of all people. Contemporary reports suggest Postgate died quickly. At least he was spared the horror of the remainder of his punishment. As a last symbolic gesture against the Catholic faith, his thumb and forefinger were amputated as these held the host during the mass consecration. Postgate's body was given to his friends for burial, probably somewhere near this spot. Between 1537 and 1680, he was one of 52 men and women martyred here. Only one more followed him, Thomas Thwing, another Dowie priest, similarly accused of a plot against the king. <laughs> 